In this lesson, you will begin work on the project that contains a wet fire protection system. You will create a new pipe type and then you will configure conversion settings that you will use when you create piping to physically connect the sprinklers. You will also check a space schedule that you can use to assess the coverage for the fire protection systems. Click the menu browser and select open and from the training files imperial fire protection systems folder open the file rme fp planning 01 let's create a pipe type in the project browser expand families then expand pipes and under pipe types right click standard and click duplicate then right click the copy standard 2 and click rename and enter fire protection wet then right click the new type and select properties and in the type properties dialog under mechanical for material select carbon steel and click OK. Next we'll configure pipe conversion settings. Click the manage tab and from the project settings panel click the MEP settings drop down and select mechanical settings. In the mechanical settings dialog on the left side under pipe settings conversion select main and from system type select fire protection wet and for pipe type select pipe types fire protection wet and verify that the offset is set to 9 feet and on the left side under pipe settings conversion select branch and for system type select fire protection wet and for pipe type select pipe type fire protection wet and verify the offset is at 9 feet the offset elevation for the pipe main places it at 9 feet above the referenced level for the views level 2 is the referenced level for the views where you'll be designing so the pipe main will be offset from level 2. Similarly, the offset elevation for the pipe branches places them at 9 feet above the referenced level for the views. The branch offset allows you to automatically create branches that run above or below the main and other obstacles. This is useful for avoiding interferences with pipes, duct, structural beams or architectural components. It is good to note here that conversion settings are applied when you convert the piping layout path to physical piping. You can configure the conversion settings at the beginning or during your project. However, you should configure or verify the conversion settings before you convert a layout path. Configuring the conversion settings is usually a one-time process unless you need to change them during your project. Click OK and close the file without saving it as the next lesson will provide its own training file and that concludes this lesson. In this lesson, you will create a sprinkler zone project parameter. You will then assign spaces in the top portion of the plan to one zone and spaces in the bottom portion to another zone. Click the menu browser and select open and from the training files imperial fire protection systems folder open the file rme fp planning 02. To create project parameters 
click the Manage tab. And from the Project Settings panel, click Project Parameters. In the Project Parameters dialog, click Add. And in the Parameter Properties dialog, under Parameter Data, for Name, type Sprinkler Zone. And for Group Parameter Under, select Fire Protection. And under Categories, select Spaces. And click OK twice. In the drawing area, select Space Instruction 221 as shown. And right click and click Element Properties. In the Instance Properties dialog, scroll down to under Fire Protection. And for Sprinkler Zone, type Zone 1 and click OK. Then draw a selection window around the upper half of the building as shown. And then click Filter. In the Filter dialog, verify that only spaces are selected and click OK. Then on the Element panel, from the Element Properties drop down, select Instance Properties. And in the Instance Properties dialog, under Fire Protection, for Sprinkler Zone, select Zone 1 and click OK. Using the same method, draw a selection window around the lower half of the building. And then click Filter and make sure that only spaces are selected. And then from the Element Properties drop down, select Instance Properties and scroll down to under Fire Protection in the Instance Properties dialog and enter Zone 2 for Sprinkler Zone and click OK and then clear the selection. Now all the spaces in the top portion of the plan are assigned to Zone 1 and the spaces in the bottom portion are assigned to Zone 2. Close the file without saving it as the next lesson will provide its own training file and that concludes this lesson. In this lesson, you will create schedules for sprinkler design, to which you will add various parameters, including a calculated value parameter. You will then modify the schedules and add an embedded schedule in order to use the schedule as a design tool. Click the menu browser and select Open. And from the Training Files Imperial Fire Protection Systems folder, Open the file RME FP Planning 03. Let's create a key schedule. Click the Analyze tab and from the Reports and Schedules panel, click Schedules Quantities. In the New Schedule dialog, under Category, select Spaces. And for Name, enter Sprinkler Spacing and Coverage Area Schedule. Then select Schedule Keys and for Key Name, type Protection Area Construction Type. Then click OK. And Next, we'll create a Schedule Parameter. In the Schedule Properties dialog, click Add Parameter. And in the Parameter Properties dialog, for Name, enter Maximum Spacing. And for Type of Parameter, select Length. And for Group Parameter Under, select Fire Protection and click OK. Using the same method, 
create a parameter named maximum coverage area. That is an area type grouped under fire protection. Then on the formatting tab, select maximum spacing and click field format. And in the format dialog, clear use project settings and for rounding, select to the nearest one foot and click OK twice. When the schedule displays, to resize column widths in the schedule, double click on each column separator. Then select the header in the key name column and type protection area type as the new header. Then from the schedule panel, under rows, click new. In the new row, under protection area type, enter light obstructed combustible. And in the maximum spacing column, enter 15. And in the maximum coverage area column, enter 130. Then using the same method, add more scheduled data as follows. You may want to pause the video at this time. Next, we'll create a sprinkler schedule. Click the Analyze tab, and from the Reports and Schedules panel, click Schedule Quantities, and in the new Schedule dialog, for Category, select Spaces, and for Name, enter Sprinkler Schedule. and click OK. Then back in the Schedule Properties dialog, under Available Fields, select Number, and click Add. Then add the following fields as shown. You will want to pause the video at this time again. When finished, click Calculated Value. In the Calculated Value dialog, for Name, Type minimum sprinklers and for formula click browse and in the fields dialog select area and click OK. Then type space forward slash space and click browse again and select maximum coverage area and click OK. Then click OK again and on the formatting tab select minimum sprinklers and click field format in the format dialog clear use default settings and for units select fixed click ok twice next we'll organize the scheduled data right click in the schedule and click View Properties. Then in the Instance Properties dialog, under Other, for Sorting and Grouping, click Edit. On the Sorting and Grouping tab, for Sort By, select Level. Then click Header and Blank Line. For Then By, select Sprinkler Zone. And then click Header and blank line again. And for the second instance of then by, select number. And at the bottom of the dialog, select grand totals and then select totals only. And click the formatting tab. Under fields, select sprinkler zone. And under field formatting, select hidden field. Then Back under Fields, select Level, and hide that field as well. Then click the Filter tab, and for Filter By, select Level equals Level 2. Then click OK twice. Next, we'll group Schedule Columns. 
Click and drag to select the last four schedule column headers. And then on the schedule panel under headers, click group. Then click in the grouped header cell and type maximum sprinkler spacing and area coverage. Then delete the word maximum in the cells below it. Next, we'll create an embedded schedule. Right click in the schedule and click View Properties. And in the Instance Properties dialog, under Other, for Embedded Schedule, click Edit. In the Schedule Properties dialog, on the Embedded Schedule tab, select Embedded Schedule. And under Category, select Sprinklers. And then click Embedded Schedule Properties. In the Schedule Properties dialog, on the Fields tab, under Available Fields, double-click Type, System Name, and Count. Then, on the Formatting tab, under Fields, select Count, and under Field Formatting, select Calculate Totals. And on the Sorting and Grouping tab, select Grand Totals, and then select Totals only, and click OK three times. Next, we'll modify space properties from the schedule. Open the view Level 2 Fire Protection Plan Design, and then click the View tab, and from the Windows panel, click Tile Windows. Then, in the Plan view, select Space 221 Instruction, and click Element Properties, and in the Instance Properties dialog, scroll down to under Identity Data, and note that there's nothing specified for Protection Area Construction Type. Then scroll further down to under Fire Protection, and notice that the Maximum Spacing and Maximum Coverage Area parameters that you created are listed but their values are not determined. Click Cancel. Then, in the Sprinkler Schedule, select Space 221 Instruction, and for Protection Area Construction Type, select Ordinary Unobstructed. Then, with the space still selected, click in the Floor Plan to make it the Active View and then access its Instance Properties. In the Instance Properties dialog, scroll down to under Identity Data, and notice the value for Protection Area Construction Type, and change it to Light Unobstructed, and click OK, and notice the change in the schedule. Next, close the Sprinkler Spacing and Coverage Area schedule, and tile the windows again. Then, in the floor plan, select the upper half of the building and filter the selection for spaces only. Then, click Element Properties and under Identity Data for Protection Area Construction Type, select Ordinary Unobstructed. Then click OK. Note the schedule updates and close the file without saving it as the next lesson will provide its own training file. And that concludes this lesson.